Now, many of us associate heroin addiction with marginalised communities, but one middle-class mother who was a teacher has not one but two sons became addicted to heroin with tragic circumstances. She's here with us, Elizabeth Burton Phillips. Thank you so much for coming Thank in you, and talking to us today. Um, tw you were your twin boys. That's right, yes. Yes, and they were doing well. And you had, as we said there, you had a, a, a good job in a, a private mm -hmm. school. Yes. And what age were your kids at that stage? Uh, 13. 13 years yes. old. Yeah. So they were going on with their lives. You had them in a private school as well. That's you thought right. for the best education. And, yeah. and tell us what happened from there. Well, like a lot of young people, they um, started smoking the odd cigarette. And before they knew where they were, Cannabis was on the scene, mm -hmm. freely offered to them by people who sell it to kids. Mm -hmm. And they started on a road of experimenting now and again with, with drugs. Mm -hmm. And by the time they were 18, <coughs> um, they were offered a heroin spliff mm -hmm. and, when, and accepted it. When and did you realise that there was a problem there? Did you, but you, did you see any of the signs beforehand with uh, the cannabis and stuff like that? No. No. That's one of the things that I would say is really very important and I would want to alert your viewers to noticing what the signs are because I didn't know mm -hmm. any of the signs because of drugs. Because you, you didn't know anything about drugs? I didn't know anything about drugs. But also you're thinking the kids are going to a private school. Yes. It's a good school. Surely yes. to God there's nothing like that there. Absolutely. That's right. Um, and what I've learned, of course, is that um, drug addiction cuts across all... Mm -hmm. Stratas of society, and you can. I certainly knew when I was teaching, and I actually used to teach what I call paper drug education, mm -hmm. um, um. and I used to associate it with somebody else, but I never knew who that somebody else was. There was no face with it. No. Yeah. But it certainly didn't uh, connect with my life and and the teaching work that I did. Mm -hmm. Were the boys? Uh, did they hang around with the same kind of groups? Because they were twins. They were the same yeah. age, obviously. Yeah. Um, and did they kind of, did one start first or do you know how, how they got onto the heroin? It was really a, in a group um, okay. that um, somebody kind of groomed them in in a way who, who broke into the group and uh, actually 10 of them ended up as heroin addicts. 10? Uh -huh. 10 of them. Of, of the yes. same group? Of the same group, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I think five of them still are mm -hmm. all yeah. these years on now. Yes. Yeah. How long were they on heroin before you realised? Um... You start to realise very quickly when um, they lose jobs, their personalities change, they become uh, secretive, they start But you could be saying to yourself, this is like any ordinary teenager, because we were all like that at mm, some stage. Yes, except they begin to have what I call the face of addiction, okay. um, which is a very ill face. Can we show uh, the first photo of the two, of the two guys here and then show the, la the later photos? Here they are. What age were they there? Uh, this photograph was taken just before their, actually on their 27th birthday, mm -hmm. and both of them were at that point um, many years into heroin addiction, but trying to get themselves off it. Okay. Uh, working with the doctors on mm -hmm. a what's known as a subutex program. Okay. Trying Let's to get themselves off take it. a look at the next shot here. There's a, there's a huge difference yes. there, Elizabeth, isn't there? That's right. That's the point of injecting heroin. Um, they've gone from smoking a spliff with heroin mm -hmm. to chasing the dragon to injecting heroin. And that's the thing about class A addiction is that you're always chasing the bigger hit. Mm -hmm. And to think that your own children would inject themselves um, is like beyond, beyond anybody's mm -hmm. understanding because we only really have an injection when we go mm -hmm. to the doctor or go yeah. to the hospital. The thing is, I suppose, when they've gone that far in the sense of injecting, it's, it, you can't go any further. So, no. you know, it's, it's a chaotic life that they're a chaotic living. Lifestyle, so they're yes. consistently, obviously, they were short of money. They were probably trying to uh, pay drug dealers mm -hmm. because they probably couldn't really exist on their own. Did you at any stage give them money to, to help them along this way when you found out that they were really hooked? All the time. That was the thing that I didn't realise I was doing. I was enabling them to continue yeah. their addiction. Hence the title of my book, Mum, Can You Lend Me yeah. 20 Quid? And mm -hmm. that's what they used to say. When did they actually own, own up and say, listen, we are, addic we are addicts? Uh, when they'd lost everything. Mm -hmm. When they'd lost everything they'd in their lives. They'd hit rock lives. bottom. They'd hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. They had nothing left, no job. What nothing. did you say? Um, it's not so much what I said, it's what I felt. Mm -hmm. I felt uh, as, as though my world had disintegrated. Mm -hmm. I felt that it was my fault that I had failed as a mother um, and that I hadn't seen the signs. Yeah. Um, and you'd start mm -hmm. to self-blame. Um, but what you 
don't realise until you go through this process is that um, addiction consumes a person's life and you can't fix it mm. for them. That's what I mean and that's and, why you yeah. had to pull back probably, did you? Yes, at, that's at, right. at a certain stage. Yes, you have to. I think at the, point of, the point of pulling back for me was when my late son actually couldn't stop himself from injecting mm. in front of me and he's, his lifestyle was so chaotic, so desperate that you know, he just ha had to do that. And there comes a point when you've paid off drug dealers, when you've remortgaged mm -hmm. your house, when you've done everything you can to rescue your children and to prevent them from mm -hmm. going yeah. any further, that you, you have to pull back. And as you said, then, Nick sadly didn't make it through. He didn't make it yeah. through, no. He, sadly, he committed suicide and his brother, Simon, found him dead. And uh, that changed our lives forever. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a terrible thing, but... Did you expect something as horrendous as this to happen? Actually, I did. I mm. expected them both to die. And when the police knocked on the door and said one of them had died, I didn't say, have you got that wrong? Mm. I just felt this enormous grief and enormous relief at yeah. the same time. Mm -hmm. And that was very hard to deal with. It was a cataclysmic thing, but it, it had to happen maybe for yes. mm -hmm. Simon yes. to actually stop everything and That's say, right. enough. Absolutely. Simon did do that. He said that in his brother's name, he had to turn his life around. And he believes that his brother's suicide gave him life. Mm -hmm. And he has, he has children of his own now. He's married with children of his own, a full-time mm -hmm. job, abstinence-free from drugs, a mm -hmm. great story of recovery. There's now a play a theatre and education play that's been to Dublin. Yeah, um, this is about the book, This though. is about yes. your book, yeah. Yes, yes, this has been adapted from the book. And uh, we were so privileged to be uh, invited to um, perform at... I believe you're coming, you're coming back to Ireland Cathedral. as well, aren't you? Yes, yeah. yes, I believe we are. We are coming back, hopefully, to meet some of the and, prison and, governors. And the play, basically, would it kind of just send out messages to moms and dads out there to just have a look at this, if you see any of these signs, is there, is there, is there a bit of education thrown there's, into it as well? There's more than education more into yeah. it. It's there's absolutely, absolutely adapted from the book. So it shows mm. the, the, the most important thing about it is it shows the impact on the families, mm. the ripple effect mm. on the families, the pain that the parents go through, the desperation that they through, through, go through, the desire mm. to do anything they can to make their children well. But it also, whilst it deals very openly with the suicide and the death mm. of Nick, it, mm. it also shows the recovery of Simon. Of Simon yeah. So it gives hope. Yeah, you had to do that, I suppose. You wrote the book and then that was, as you said, adapted to the play. Well, I think that you did a very brave thing in the sense of after what you had gone through that you... Mm -hmm. uh, do you feel in some way that writing the book helped your, you yourself as a mother as well to, to understand it a bit better? Absolutely. The, um, I'm a teacher by, by profession and writing it down was very therapeutic yeah. and it, it was almost like an exorcism of the, yeah. the heroin from the system and then we set up the charity in, in my son's memory to support families. Um, yeah. who are affected by addiction. Elizabeth, thank, thank you, you very so much, much for, for coming, coming in. Thank you very welcome. Story today. Yeah, absolutely. Very welcome. A, a dreadful story, but I suppose, you know, happiness at the end of it in some way. Yes, I mean, I, I do know that there is a very good support network, the Irish Family mm. Support Network. We're actually just going to tell people yes, about yeah. that now, because if people have been affected by heroin or in their family or, or any other drugs, as Elizabeth said, you can, you can call Drug Fam, and that's your organisation yes. in the UK, but they take calls uh, from here as well, and that's 0044 300 Eight 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 three eight five three. We'll put that on our Facebook page, or here in Ireland, you can contact the National Family Support Network, and their website is fsn.ie. Thanks. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you very much again for being with us.